All right guys, welcome back to the channel. I have something new for show and tell today. This is a little GB110 from GearBest. It's a pretty cool little quad. I've been looking at this for some time on their website and was hoping that I would be able to get one and show you uh, because it does have some pretty cool things on here. Also, now that I've spent a day or two with this, uh, I've also been able to go through some of the caveats of the quad and, and go through some of the setup and hopefully save you some time if you get one of these and I can show you some things about uh, what to look out for because I actually went through a couple setups with this with my receiver uh, I thought that I was going to be able to get it underneath here and put it on top of the board here but the problem is is that when these props come around the props will actually hit the receiver they all come in here right over top of the flight controller so normally I haven't seen props get this close to the flight controller, but there's not a lot of room up inside here where these props come in to meet in the center of this frame. So you're going to have to put your your receiver somewhere else other than right on top of the flight controller uh, in the stack. You can put it up here on top, and a lot of times we don't like to do that because it exposes things and makes things more susceptible to crash. Um, so what I did was looking at GearBest's picture that they have on their website, I took my receiver and I put it inside the cage over here on the right hand side uh, above this bottom plate. And then I ran my antennas underneath the quad out this direction and out this direction because you want to have your antennas sort of separated. Now normally what I would do is bring them out and kind of have them antenna out like this. Uh, but for this one, I just decided it's going to be kind of close proximity racing anyway. So I'm going to test out the range. Now, normally these X4, uh, this is the X4R uh, transmitter, Tyrannus, and it, it will go quite a distance. It, it's given me better distance than Spectrum uh, transmitters have. Now, I took one single zip tie and I put it around here and I put a little piece of VHB on the bottom here, this little gray tape. You can get this at Home Depot. This stuff is awesome. Uh, I also put another piece of it underneath the VTX back here because they just had this VTX kind of sitting on the carbon. And sometimes I like to cushion stuff and make stuff stay still with this uh, VHB. It's very, very cool stuff. You can uh, find several different versions of that at Home Depot. And then I also added a couple more zip ties here. But also with the receiver, what I did was I moved the receiver toward the center a little more inside here because this edge of this VTX where this connector comes off right here you don't really want that hanging out back past the edge of the the quad because when you do crash and this gets ripped this way you might have a direct impact on that connector part and it could break this off of the VTX. I've seen other quads come from China and sometimes they do have something exposed like that and then sometimes it breaks right off so um, give it a little bit of structural support there by having it on this bottom plate now and just moving it in a little bit now also one thing I want to talk about and I haven't even jumped into the specs yet because I really needed to to get you guys this information on um, how the setup goes with this one uh, very important when you spool this up if this camera is set to the very back uh, slot here it's going to give you a little more tilt but the problem is is that when this is in that back slot the props hit the camera so the first time I spooled this up you know I hear this kak, 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 and I you know cut everything off hit throttle kill picked it up and started moving my props what is it hitting it's hitting the camera so um, I don't know if they test flew this when they made this uh, unit originally using that slot but it shipped with the camera in that that back slot and it had a little more tilt in there which I was excited about but now I'm gonna have to fly it like this or I'm gonna have to figure out some other configuration where I can maybe tilt it further uh, and and get it out of the way of the props but that's not going to work. So 
The other thing is, is that these ESCs are really, really tight in here, guys. Um, I've seen some really tight solders coming from China recently, and these are some of the tightest, shortest wires that I've seen soldered up in a kit so far. Um, there's hardly any room in there between the motor and your ESC. So what I'm telling you here is watch out for this motor bell spins inside here. So as this is turning, you want to make damn sure that your wires coming off the end of this ESC aren't up and, and touching this bell. Because when I, I just do a finger test and I rotate my motors to see that they're moving freely. And if they feel like they're snagging at all, you need to look really closely in at your ESC here and make sure that these wires are not rubbing on the motor because that's going to cause a failure. It's going to rub through the wire and short out your quad. You're going to see a puff of white smoke. You're going to come to a crash. So be very careful about that. It's another um, piece of advice. But I would like to see more camera tilt in here. That would be one con that I'm looking at right now. I'm going to have to figure out how I can change that. Um, the ESC, I mean the, uh, the excuse me, the receiver is going to be fine right there because it does have plenty of clearance below the props. I don't have any problems there. It is nice, and we'll talk about some of the specs on this. It is nice that they added these uh, 1806. They're 4,000 kV motors. So they are pretty high kV. You're going to get a lot of power out of this. And you got a 200 milliwatt transmitter back here rather than a 25 milliwatt like I've seen on some smaller micros. This is way better transmitter. You're going to get a lot more range out of this one. I would like to see a push button digital transmitter on this uh, for the price that this one came for uh, because it has dip switches on here. Which dip switches are kind of 2015 at this point, uh, maybe 2014. So we have digital switch ones now, and we should have, really have one of those on here. You got your 5.8 antenna coming out the back here. Pretty standard clove relief setup there. Um, and these motors are pretty noisy. When you fire this up, as small as this is, it's actually pretty loud and uh, aggressive sounding. I tried it out on 4S and I tried it out on 3S. So you can, you can actually run it on 4 or 3S, which is super cool. Uh, the flight controller is an SP Racing and it has beta flight already flashed on there, which is super cool. I like that a lot. I didn't have to do a lot of setup. Uh, I changed my rates to 75. Uh, 0.75 on all of the axes on the yaw, the roll, and the pitch axes, just to give me a better, a tighter flip. So if you're new to this, you might want to uh, watch some videos on Beta Flight. Now the standoffs, all the way around, they're kind of these gold-colored standoffs, and the frame itself, the top and the bottom plate are 1.5 mil. Um, not the thickest, but then again, this is a super light quad that you're gonna fly. Uh, you're gonna fly it on a 3S, probably 1,000 that they recommend. So it's not gonna be super, super heavy. If you fly a 1300 on this, it's gonna fly kind of like a hog. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit heavy feeling when you take off. So once you're in acro, you can really get hauling ass anyway. So um, probably doesn't matter a ton. But I would stick to around the 1,000 milliamp range if you can keep the battery weight down. I have some 3S 850s that, that I was using just to make it a little bit lighter, sacrifice some flight time for maybe a, a little better feeling in the air. Now I have uh, my Tyrannus Plus hooked up to this and like I said it was pretty easy to set up in clean flight but um, it's kind of hard to get the USB cable into this slot because normally we don't have a cage around the quadcopter and we can just plug it right in. Uh, I thought I might have to take the prop off to be able to get to this USB port, but I was wrong about that. You can kind of still get it in there. Uh, it's a little tight, but you can get it in there. Now, when you're putting your receiver wires up inside here too, you want to make sure that those are as short as possible, and then you want to put a little uh, zip tie around this post here as it passes by and over top of your flight controller. I wanted to run it underneath, but I didn't want to take the board off. And I think all the wires underneath here are pretty tight anyway, so I won't have much, um, much room to pull it and move it. Because we do have, like I said, we do have a super tight, compact uh, wire soldering situation inside this. 
Now your battery is going to ride on the bottom. You can take these optional feet off the bottom, sort of has a kind of a landing gear. You're not going to be landing on those anyway because the battery is going to be on the bottom. Uh, and I think that's going to give us a little better center of gravity situation here. And it's sort of a true X configuration with this cage around it. Now, when I first looked at this, I thought it would be super cool if I could take this cage off and make it just this little, see how tiny this little X frame would be. Uh, and you would shave off a ton of weight because riding with these 1306 motors on this tiny of a frame would be pretty amazing. Um, because some of these 100 size quads are starting to have brush, uh, brushless motors on them and they rip like the big guys, which is a lot of fun. But they do have an angle on the board as well. So if you look in beta flight, you're going to see that this board is tilted on a positive 45 axis. Um, and normally we have the boards at a 90 or a zero degree, uh, normally facing forward. But that is something you can do in clean flight. If you built one of these from scratch and you put it on a 45 like that, just know that you got to have that set up so that the forward direction is facing the correct direction uh, for, tr for flight. But everything's looking pretty good on here. And like I said, you know, you want to watch the motors, the ESC wires up next to the motors here because there's not a lot of room. But overall, I felt like it's a pretty cool little quad. I would like to uh, see maybe a, maybe a smaller version of this quad without this uh, prop barrier around it, this prop guards. But the point of this quad is, is that you want to have something that's going to protect it in a crash. Uh, the only thing that's not protected probably on here is this camera sticking out the front. That's probably a downfall of design. Maybe if I could move it back just a little tiny bit like I was talking about, but then I'm going to be hitting the props. There's not a lot of clearance in here, folks. Okay, so yeah, we have some cool specs on here. We have the 20 amp ESCs also that I didn't mention yet. Uh, those are BL Heli, by the way. They're Simon K ESCs. They're not the one-shot style ESCs that we've seen on other quads, but BL Heli is nice, and uh, we can program those if we want to inside the BL Heli suite. So let's talk about some pros and cons uh, really quickly. I already told you a lot of the pros and cons, but uh, I'm going to tell you what I like and what I don't like about this one. Uh, what I do like about this is it kind of feels like uh, pretty solid in my hands. It feels like it could really take some pretty hard hits and just kind of bounce because of how lightweight it is and uh, this kind of rigid frame around it. I wouldn't be scared off by the 1.5 millimeter um, top and bottom plate. I think that's going to be plenty durable with the way that they have this set up. Uh, plus the, the weight factor is also pretty light. Uh, but if you're looking for something like a, a cool little micro that you didn't have to build, this is actually pretty nice because I've seen other quads out there. Uh, Tomo and some other people are doing some really, really cool little micro builds and I can't stand doing little tiny soldering jobs. Uh, little tiny builds drive me a little bit crazy. I, I like to work in the 200 size. Uh, so I don't build a lot of micros, but this is really nice for me because I didn't have to build it. Uh, I just had to put a receiver on it, bind it up to my Tyrannus, and, and I'm good to go. Um, I like the way that it flies in acro. And if you're going to fly, if you're a new guy, fly it in stabilize and in horizontal mode. And you'll still, in horizontal, you'll be able to do flips. But overall, a pretty pretty cool quad. And I'd like to see a next version of this come out, maybe without this cage, and with just this true X and a tall stack. And maybe this camera moved up inside a little cage here. I think that would be a really, really nice design, uh, especially for a 110 size quadcopter. Everything is getting super small, guys. And uh, this is kind of where, where things are progressing to. So this is pretty neat for me. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that flight footage and some of the setup tips on getting one of these GV110s. I, I liked it a lot. So I'm going to continue to fly this one. Thanks again for watching the channel. I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps. I'll see you on the next one.